In this video, we're going to be talking about electrolysis. Sodium chloride is a compound, which means that the elements are chemically joined together. Unlike a mixture in which the components can be separated, a compound requires a lot of energy to separate the elements. One way to do that is via electrolysis. Electrolysis can be broken down into two components, electro, which refers to the use of electricity, and lysis, which means to split. So we're going to be using electricity to split sodium chloride back into its elements. This is what an electrolysis setup looks like. We have a power supply and two electrodes. Now these electrodes both have names. One of them is called an anode and the other one is called a cathode. And if you forget which way around it goes, then it's time to panic because positive is the anode and negative is cathode. There are two ways that we can do electrolysis. One is molten and the other is aqueous. The reason that we use these conditions is so that the ions can move to the electrodes. Remember, we can't do electrolysis of a solid because the ions can't move as they are stuck within the fixed ionic lattice. Let's start by looking at molten electrolysis. Aluminium oxide, also known as bauxite, is a common ore that contains aluminium. Aluminium is an example of a metal that can only be extracted by electrolysis. The reason behind that is because we can't do reduction with carbon as it is more reactive than carbon. It is often mixed with cryolite, which is another aluminium ore. This helps to lower the melting point, which means less heat is required. Therefore, it saves energy and also it's much more economical. Aluminium forms 3 plus ions, whereas oxygen forms O minus 2 ions. To find out why this happens, watch our video on the periodic table. In short, aluminium is in group 3, so it loses 3 electrons, whereas oxygen is in group 6, so it gains 2 electrons. Okay, now let's have a look at how this would look like in a tank. After heating, the molten aluminium oxide separates into its ions. These are now able to move around freely. Since opposites attract, the negatively charged oxygen ions move towards the anode and the positively charged aluminium ions move towards the cathode. So as the reaction progresses, you will begin to see bubbles around the anode. This tells us that a gas is being produced. Now we predict that this is oxygen and you can test for oxygen by using it to relight a glowing splint. As for aluminium, there will be a molten layer of aluminium forming near the bottom of the tank. The reason behind this is because aluminium is a metal and it's more dense compared to oxygen. Half equations show what reactions are happening at each electrode. Let's start with the cathode. Remember, the ions are turning back into the atomic elements. So aluminium 3 plus turns into aluminium. Now we can see that the atoms are balanced on both sides. However, the charges are not balanced. The overall charge on the left is 3 plus, whereas the overall charge on the right is zero. We're going to add electrons to the side which has a higher charge. In this case, 3 plus is higher than 0. So to fix this, we're going to add 3 electrons to the left. That gives it a 3 minus charge. So now both sides have the same charge. Let's have a look at what happens at the anode. We start off with oxygen 2 minus ions, and this turns back into O2. Now you might wonder why there's a 2 next to oxygen. Some elements, when they're in the elemental form, exist as diatomic molecules. A good way to remember those is have no fear of ice-cold biryani. Hydrogen, nitrogen, fluorine, oxygen, iodine, chlorine and bromine all exist as diatomic molecules. There are more than this, but for GCSE we can stick to these ones for now. So, first of all, let's balance the atoms. There are two oxygens on the right, so I'm going to put a 2 here. Now, let's balance the charges using electrons. First of all, the overall charge on the left is 2 lots of 2 minus, so that's a 4 minus. The charge on the right is 0. So, we're going to add 4 electrons to the right. Now, the overall charge on the right is also 4 minus. Remember, the goal is to make sure both sides have the same charge and not to try and make both sides equal to 0. So, 4 minus and 4 minus are balanced. And these are the two half equations for this particular reaction. 
The first reaction is a reduction reaction because it has gained electrons. Another way to identify it is to look at the charge. The charge of aluminium has gone from plus 3 to 0, so it has gone down and therefore it has been reduced. The second reaction is an oxidation reaction because it has lost electrons. In terms of charge, oxygen has gone from 2 minus to 0, so it has increased in charge and therefore it has been oxidized. Let's have a go at writing the half equations for the electrolysis of molten magnesium chloride. So magnesium will form 2 plus ions because it's in group 2 and it loses 2 electrons. Chlorine will form minus 1 ions because it's in group 7 and gains an electron. At the cathode, magnesium 2 plus ions will turn into magnesium atoms. Now, we have to make sure that we balance the half equation correctly. Now, the number of atoms are the same on both sides, however, the charge is not. The overall charge on the left is 2 plus, whereas the charge on the right is 0. Therefore, we have to add 2 electrons to the left hand side. Now, both sides have an overall charge of 0. At the anode, chloride ions turn into chlorine gas. Remember, chlorine is one of those elements that are in the list of diatomic molecules. Now, let's make sure that both atoms and charges are balanced. So now we've balanced the atoms on both sides. Let's look at the charges. The overall charge on the left is 2 minus, whereas the overall charge on the right is 0. Since 0 is greater than 2 minus, we're going to add 2 electrons to the right hand side. Now both sides have the same charge. There we go, that is our final equation. The top reaction is a reduction because it has gained electrons, or you can see the charge has gone from 2 plus to 0, therefore it has been reduced. The reaction at the anode is an oxidation reaction. It has lost electrons, and you can see the charge has gone from minus 1 to 0, so it has increased. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com, where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.